With us now, a man who knows just a few things about trying to keep the president out of the public eye, Mick Mulvaney, News Nation contributor and former Trump White House acting chief of staff. What I think is interesting um, is, Mick, you had the very unenviable job of trying to get Donald Trump to stay away from the press, and he, I don't think, ever took your advice um, on that. Is this up yeah. to... Is this, uh, is this up to Joe Biden or is this up to his staff? Well, ultimately, everything's up to the president. I, I wouldn't say that I was, I was trying to fight the president. We tried to sort of guide the, the press at the proper times. Um, but, you know, every time we suggested something different, the president would look at me and go, uh, how many times have you been elected president? Zero. OK, we're doing it my way, which is the right answer, I suppose. You know, and your staff or you try and give other ideas, but the president ultimately is the final decision maker. And that is the case with Joe Biden. Joe Biden could take these questions if he wanted to. He could overrule his staff. The staff don't run the place, especially the, the communications and press staff. These are some of the most junior people um, in the building. The chief of staff is a very senior person. The you know assistant secretary who, who uh, assistant comms press secretary who is in charge of rounding up the uh, media gaggle is not a very senior person. And that person has no business telling the president mm -hmm. what he can or cannot do. So look, it's going to be tough. Um, Trump did it his way. Biden is doing it his way. My guess is he's using his staff as an excuse to uh, to not do interviews because he doesn't want to do them. I don't know. If you zoom in on the picture when the press was being taken away, it almost looked like he, he seemed a little sad or confused or something. But what I... I think what's interesting when you see the, these pictures, and um, you know, you've been there and I've been there with the White House press corps. Um, that's the travels with the president. The pools it is are out out on the South Lawn with Marine One. Um, that it's a pretty aggressive bunch of people, right? Uh, that's just who White House reporters are. Um, at what point do the White House reporters, you think, begin to push back and start noting that now not only the president, but the man who's running for president. Uh, is doing so in a way that is more sheltered than any president in modern time. Yeah, I know this is going to sound a little self-serving, but there's two answers to your question. If it was a Republican president, they would have started a year ago. It's a Democrat president, so they're just now starting to sort of, you know, kick and scream a little bit, and it's still fairly private. You're not seeing jokes on Saturday Night Live about his press availability. You're not hearing commentary on the, the, the major news networks about his lack of avail availability and so forth. So look, there's a double standard in Washington, and there just there always will be. That's, that, that's just that's the nature of it. You can't complain about it because it just is what it is. But the answer to your question well, is yeah, that, you yeah. See, you, come on, people, political hacks in Washington can complain about anything. That's, that's Washington. Um, yeah, but I, they won't complain. Though, but no, it's, no, it's, look, it's, look. A, it's a fair point. Yeah, go, I, mean, hold on. I, I just want to play. The, I want to play. I want to play this for you. I want to go back all the way because you said this has been happening for a while. And had it been a Republican, uh, the complaints would have started a while ago. Take a listen. Yeah. These questions nearly every day. He's out from the press. That is not something we recommend. In fact, a lot of times we say don't take questions. Don't turn office. my off and ask the question. We have more polite people. Here. Mr. President, why have you chosen Poland? It wasn't confrontational at all. Thank, thank you, everybody. This ends thank the count press thank conference. You. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And I promise I'll come back and answer questions later. Thank you. Sir, when Trump said that, sir, what did Putin hear? What's plan B if the speaker doesn't act? Sir, I have a lot of questions. I better not start the questions. I'll get in trouble. What's your message thank for you Super Tuesday, Tuesday voters? Thank you. Everyone, please move this side. Super Tuesday, sir. Do you have a message thank for you voters? Much. Thanks. Come thank on. Thank you so much. It feels like you're saying almost that the press is a little bit complicit in that they're listening to the handlers. They're willing to go along and not push back. And I guess the question would be, if they did push back, how much of an effect would that have, you think, on the calculus of the White House? By that, by the way, the number of letters that this White House has written about the bad press coverage that they are getting has stunned me. If we had written a fifth of those letters, it would have made top line news across most major news networks. Um, and this White House seems comfortable in trying to tell the media on a regular basis how to do their job. When a Democrat president, I don't want to sound too partisan, Leland, that's not what I, I, that's not what I want to do, but I, this is a fact in Washington, D.C. When a Democrat president is complaining about the mainstream press, and I'm talking about the CBS, CNN, yeah. ABC's, 
uh, of the world, then that means that they are really, really out of touch. They expect those news outlets to do their bidding. That's just the way it works. There is no, co it's not a coincidence that Jane, mm -hmm. that uh, Basaki got a job at MSNBC. And Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.